Welcome back to Monster Tamer, a 2D Pokemon-like RPG created with Phaser 3. Previously, we wrapped up creating the basic layout for our battle scene. If you missed the previous videos, there'll be links in the video description to the source code up to this point, as well as the complete source code for this video. There will also be a link to the previous videos if you'd like to catch up. So let's get started. Alright, so now that we have the basic layout done for our battle scene, what we're going to do is we're going to refactor some of our game objects into their own uh, components. So then that way, not everything's in our main uh, battle scene class. And the first one we're going to start with is with our two menus here. Uh, we're going to create a new component. And while we're doing our refactoring, we're going to start building out the bases for allowing the player to actually interact with our menu, which then later will uh, drive the uh, state of when the player's in the battle. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and make a new class to contain the logic for our menu here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is we'll just make this a little bit smaller. Uh, we'll go ahead and go into our source folder. Uh, under our source folder, what we'll do is we'll make a new subfolder called uh, battle. And so this is going to house all of the code that's specific to the battle scene. And so under battle, what we'll do is we'll add another folder, which we're going to call this UI. And we'll do one more in folder and we're gonna do menu so then under our menu uh what we'll do is we'll make a new file called battle menu and this will be our new class all right so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and do export class and we're gonna do battle menu and then for our class we'll add our constructor and we will expect scene uh, so this will be our phaser 3 scene that we're adding our battle menu to and then what we'll do is we'll do this and we'll add new private property scene and we will set that equal to scene so then what we'll do here is we'll just bring this up and we will define that. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to start migrating some of our code from our battle scene file over to our battle menu. Uh, so the first thing we'll do is we'll grab our battle menu options and our text styling. And we'll move those objects over to the top of our file. Then what we'll do is we're going to copy two of our methods. Uh, so we have our create main info subpane and our create main info pane. Uh, we'll copy those over. And then we're going to go ahead and copy over the logic for creating our main containers. Uh, so this logic here. Uh, so what we're going to do is first we'll copy this code here. We'll make a brand new method uh, for that. We'll place that code inside there. So what we'll do is we'll do create our monster attack submenu. Place that code in there. And then we're going to go ahead and do our create our main info pane. So what we'll do is remove this and let's go ahead and copy this logic here. Go back to our battle menu and we'll add a new method. So we'll do create main battle menu. We'll place that logic there. All right, so now that we've done that, we need to go ahead and update some of our references. Uh, since we're no longer in our phaser scene, we can no longer use this dot add. Instead, we need to do this, our private scene property and then add. Go ahead and do that. So what we'll do is we're just going to do copy. We'll do a find and replace on our file, and then it'll update all of our references. And then, so what we need to do is we also need to do that with our scale. So let's do a copy. We have two of them. So what we'll do is just going to copy this, and we'll replace this. All right. So now that we have our class updated, what we need to do is actually call our methods. So what we'll do is we'll come to our constructor. First, we're going to go ahead and do this. We'll do our create main info pane. Then we'll create our main battle menu. And then we'll go ahead and create our monster uh, sub attack pane. All right, so now that we are invoking our methods, what we actually need to do is create an instance of our battle menu class. So what we're going to do is we'll come back to battle scene. And then what we'll do is we'll come right to where we had our logic before and we'll do this. We're going to add a new property. We'll do battle menu. We'll set it equal to a new battle menu. And we'll pass in this scene uh, for our argument. And then what we'll do is we'll come to the top of our class. Let's add our new property. And we'll go ahead and save. All right. So after we do that, we'll see that our game updates and it looks the same as before. 
All right, so now that we finished our refactoring and we have the same functionality as before, we're start adding in our new logic. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on adding in logic to go ahead and hide the separate parts of our battle menu, and then also adding in logic to display text so that way we can prompt the player for what they're doing or inform them of what's happening. Uh, so as an example, what we're gonna do to our battle menu is we're gonna add some text game objects here, and then that way we can update that text as the battle states transition. And that way we can hide our menus as the players interact with them. Uh, so like as an example, if we wanted to hide the main battle menu, or if we wanted to show just the attack menu and things of that nature. All right, so to do that, what we'll do is we'll come to our battle menu class and we're gonna add a few new methods that are be public. Uh, so in that way we can call them from our battle scene class. So what we'll do is we'll come right below our constructor. Uh, the first we're gonna do is we'll do show main battle menu. All right, so this method is going to be used for showing our main battle menu and prompting the player for what they want to do. So if they want to fight, uh, use our item, or run away from the battle. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're going to need to hide our container, and we'll need to update our text game objects that we've not added yet. Uh, so in order to do that, what we actually need to do is we need to store our reference to the containers that we're creating. So what we're going to do is we're going to come to the top of our class. We're going to add you a few more properties. That way we can uh, store those references. So we'll do main, battle menu, phaser, container, game object. We're going to do one for our move selections. We'll do move selection, sub, battle, menu, phaser, container, game object. And then while we're here, we'll just add in our references to our two text game objects that we've not created yet. So we'll do our battle text game object, line one, and we're just going to copy that. And we'll do a line two. All right, so now we actually just need to update the references for when we create our containers. So then in our create main battle menu method, what we're going to do is we'll set that new property. So we'll do this. And we'll do our main battle menu phaser container game object will equal this dot scene dot add. Then we'll come down to our monster attack sub menu and we'll do the same thing for our other properties. We'll do this move selection equal our container. Then what we'll do is we'll come back up to our show main battle menu. And now we can actually show those containers now that we have a reference to them. So to do that, we'll just do this dot We'll want our main battle menu phaser container game object, and we're gonna go ahead and set the alpha to one. All right, and then we'll want a method to go ahead and hide this container as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy this, place that here, and we'll do hide main battle menu, and we're gonna set our alpha to zero. And now we're gonna to wanna to do the same thing for other uh, container for our move selection. So we're just gonna copy this, Paste it here. Let's go ahead and copy a reference to our other property. And we'll go ahead and update that here. And then what we'll do is we're going to change our method name. So we'll have show monster attack submenu. And then what we'll do is we're going to do hide monster attack submenu. All right, and so when our scene starts, we actually want to hide both of our menu options here. And we're just going to have informative text to say, like, this monster has entered the battle. So what we're going to do is when we create our containers, after we create them, we're going to go ahead and hide them automatically. So what we'll do is we're going to do this, and we'll call our hide main battle menu. And we'll do the same for our monster attack submenu. So now when our battle scene starts, we have our information pane and there's no menu options available. And then what we could do if we wanted to show them, we could go ahead and come to our battle scene and we can reference our battle menu. All right, we call show main battle menu. Uh, this will cause our game object to appear. All right, so now the last thing we need to do is we actually need to create our two text game objects so that we'll have some informational text. So to do that, what we're gonna do is we'll come down to our create main battle menu uh, method and before we create our container what we'll do is we'll create our two text game objects so we're gonna do this 
we'll reference our first game object, our first text game object, and we'll do this dot scene dot add dot text. And then we'll go ahead and specify our position as uh, so we'll do 20 for our X, 468 for our Y. And we're gonna go ahead and do what should. Um, so the first part of our text will be what should, and then on the second line will be the monster's name and then do next. And then we'll go ahead and reference our battle UI text style. Then uh, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and create our second text game object. And we'll do this.scene dot add dot text and what we'll do is we'll do 20 and we'll do 512 for our y and then we're going to reference our monster's name uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to do our monster asset keys and we'll do iguana ignite and we'll do do next and we'll reference our text style all right, and oh, if we come to the top of our file, we're just going to fix our import real quick. All right. All right, so now when our scene starts, we'll actually see our text appears in our game. All right, so what I'm going to do is we're just going to add a to-do real quick. Uh, so what we'll want to do is we're actually want to pass in our monster data when we create our battle menu. So then that way we can dynamically populate the monster's name uh, for the monster that the player has chosen. Uh, so just add a to-do, we'll do update to use monster data. That is passed into this class instance. All right, then what we'll do is when the scene starts, we're going to go ahead and hide our text game objects. So what we'll do is we're going to come up to our hide main battle menu here, and we'll go ahead and reference those two new game objects, and we'll go ahead and set the alpha on those to zero as well. So we'll do set alpha to zero. We're going to copy this. Place that here, change that to a two. And then what we want to do is we'll do the same thing for our show main battle menu. Go ahead and set the alpha to one. And then so when we show the battle menu, that's when we're prompting the user to choose something. Uh, so what we'll do is before we show everything, we'll update the text on our text game object. Uh, so we'll do this, our text game object line one. We'll do set text. And we'll do what should, and then that way as that text changes, uh, it'll be tied to our menu here. All right, so if we come back to our battle scene real quick, what we're going to do is we're just going to call our show main battle menu just to validate everything's working. All right, with that, that brings this video to an end. In our next video, we're going to work on improving our developer experience by adding some JS doc comments to our code. Uh, so currently, uh, when we are referencing our private properties that we're declaring on our class, uh, they're being defined as any. So what this does is in our editor, we're not getting any IntelliSense when we try to reference that property. Uh, so as an example, while we were working on our code, I wanted to call things like set alpha. You'll see that method does not exist because the editor doesn't know what the what the type of that property is. But by adding in the JS comments here, we can go ahead and explicitly tell our editor what the type is, and then that way, when we reference that property, we'll actually get our autocomplete. So as a reminder, there's a link in the description of this video to the complete source code for this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did enjoy the video, please consider liking the video and hitting the bell icon to be notified when the next video in the series is released. For more great Phaser 3 content, please see some of the links on your screen now.